Hello, so it's Monday, it's Anzac, well yesterday was Anzac day but it's a public holiday and here I am making a video again. We're going to be talking about what we talked about in Sunday school yesterday. I had a class in my church and we were talking about the Proverbs 31 woman and how amazing she is and I was listening to the Andrew Claven show with my husband, his podcast and he, uh, Andrew Claven, if you don't know, he's a, um, uh, by birth he's a Jew, he turned Christian, I'm not sure which kind of Christian, but he's a political speaker, uh, and my husband and I are kind of into politics. So anyway, he talks about motherhood and how we are not celebrated in the world's culture, N not just motherhood, but biblical motherhood homemakers in particular, Proverbs 31 women who take care of their children and their husband and do it for the love of it and have kind words and m mouths with m mouths that open with wisdom. And um, we're not ce celebrated by the world culture. It's just, it's just not being valued. Um, and I just wanted to talk about that for a little while, just to encourage the other mothers around me that, um, well, this is what Andrew Claven said, and it really just made me smile and tear up a little bit, that in the world's culture, we're spit upon and laughed at as if we're doing something stupid, that we're not making the best choice for ourselves and even for our families, but mostly for ourselves. We should be up in a high rise office somewhere making big, big money or even, even medium money, just being out of the home, away from our children. Our children are in daycare or in school and we're, we're wearing a suit and we're just go, go getting it girl. And, um, that's our best life apparently. Um, but Andrew Claven said, uh, it was a beautiful quote, and I tried to find it, but I can't find it. Um, I listened to it just yesterday, but I still can't find it where it was in the podcast. And I was looking for half an hour. So anyway, but I'm just going to try and remember. He said something like, but what is not celebrated on earth is celebrated above and the angels in heaven when we get there. The angels will kneel and bow and take off their starry crowns and pass them on to us. And I know that's probably not true and it doesn't say that anywhere in the Bible. But it was just a thought that God really values what we're doing. God really values it. And um, we, this is this is what the guy said, he, he, we are the, the base of all careers. We make, in a sense, we make people people. Um, we have the ability to to build a person, not, not just the atoms, because obviously that's God's job. We don't actually build in our bodies, even though our bodies do it, but God allows everything to happen. God is the one that creates life, but we we are building up people, the next doctors and the engineers, and why would we give that job up? If we if we're called to be that, if we're called to be a mother, and we, and we are a mother, why would we pass that job up? It's it's ludicrous. We have the we have the opportunity to speak to the next whoever's, you know, my son next door. He's he could be the next cleaner at my Safeway or Woolworths. Not that that's a huge aspiration according to the world but he could be the next missionary he could be the next doctor of this world like it it doesn't have to be a massive job I'm just saying he is the next generation and I can have a part in building him up um which is an amazing job anyway I was just what we were talking about in Sunday school is how the Proverbs 31 woman uh it's particularly this verse I want to talk about um I'll read it to you. Here it is. Strength and honor are her clothing. This is Proverbs chapter 31, verse 25. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. 
So this is not strength and honor are in her bones or she's born with strength and honor. This is a choice. This is a personal choice that all women can make. Strength and honor are her clothes. She chooses to put those things on herself and wear them proudly. And strength of character, strength of spirituality, strength of emotions. She chooses to have strong emotions, as in withstanding emotions. There's nothing wrong with feeling down and feeling broken and feeling sad. There's nothing wrong with that. David, of all people, can teach us that. When we're feeling those those emotions, we can cry out to the Lord. But I just imagine this woman, she doesn't allow herself to wallow in those emotions for months and months and months. You know, she does cry out to God and God helps her. And she has strength of character and strength of womanhood and motherhood and wifehood. She's strong. She chooses strength instead of weakness. And she chooses honor to be her clothing. She does not choose dishonor. Everything is a choice. And those people that say that, you know, you fall into things, that's not true. You choose them through a series of bad choices. And if one choice leads to another, then that that God teaches us that that is that is a path that we choose to fall down. No, not fall down. It's a choice, choice that we choose to walk down. But this woman is choosing honor. She's choosing the way that she looks and the way that she speaks and the things that she does is all honorable. And she chooses that. And the beautiful part in this verse is that she shall rejoice in time to come. These are not empty choices with no consequences, no lasting consequences. It doesn't matter. We know. We know that consequence matters. We know that choices matter and that they lead to consequences. And so if you choose dishonor, you will not rejoice in time to come. If you do not choose strength, you will not be rejoicing in time to come. And this woman, it's clearly the Bible is saying you make good choices, you get good results. You make good choices, you get good results in time to come. May not be straight away. You choosing to read the Bible to your son or your daughter now, today, he might be squirming, he might not be listening, he might be wanting to play with his blocks because he's two. <laughs> That's my story. But in time to come, I know that I'm going to be rejoicing. I know that if I work hard, the Lord has said, you teach your children the right way and they will not depart from it. And of course, I know that my son has free will. And if he exercises his free will to run away from the Lord, well, then I will just have to pray for him and I'll have to pray for him and love him in every way I can. But... This woman, it says, she will rejoice in time to come, choosing strength and honor. And yeah, I have a little story that I was going to say, but um, no, I'll tell it. You know what? My son has been, <laughs> my son, just a little example. This is tiny. And so you might laugh at it and I laugh at it myself, but he's been lying about um, when he has done a poo. Um, and so I'll ask him, have you done a poo? And he'll say, no, no, and he has. Um, so he's lying. And I know that might seem just a small, tiny little thing. And I understand why, maybe. Maybe it's embarrassing. Maybe he doesn't want his nappy changed because it's embarrassing. I don't know. But um, maybe he knows that he should be doing it on the on the potty. And I, d I don't know. But he's lying. And it's a serious thing to lie. I don't want to set that precept upon his mind that it's fine and it's funny. And it's cute to lie. It's not those things. It's deadly. It can lead you to hell. And um, that's exactly what the Bible says. That um, lies that will have their place in the lake of fire. And that may not sound great. And it's not. And that's why it's in the Bible and it's serious. And so I've been talking to him about it. And, um, and so we've been dealing with that seriously. And the other day, I rejoiced in time to come because he finally, I asked him, I said, did you do a poop? I can smell it. And he said, mm-hmm, mm. -hmm. mm. And he said, yes. And uh, we, we dealt with that straight away. We rejoiced together. because, And he was laughing and rejoicing because he knew he didn't have the guilt. He didn't say, have to say, sorry, mum, sorry, Lord. He didn't have any guilt. 
And it was, we were both rejoicing together because he told the truth the first time. And it, there was rewards, there was hugs and kisses. And it just, it wasn't manipulated. It was just rejoicing out of a pure heart because he had done the right thing. And just choosing honor, choosing to address things that need to be addressed. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. But I just wanted to use this video to tell you that if you are being a biblical mother, I know sometimes we tell ourselves, yes, I'm doing the right thing, I'm doing the right thing. Um, being a Proverbs 1, 30, uh, being a Proverbs 31 woman and maybe having industry at home and maybe not making a lot of money or maybe not getting a lot of just recognition. And that can be hard. I know that we're not meant to look for that. But living with that can be hard. Having friends and family and people just, I don't know. It's its just in, built within us to, to just war through it. I, I don't know. Um, it, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I'm not saying that there's not great emotions that come with it. I'm just saying that the world is, is we're going uphill. It's just a battle. I'm just saying it's a battle. And to hear someone on the radio say, um, you women need to be lifted up. And I'm right now I'm lifting you up. A man who might not even be saved. I think he might be, but... It was just, it made me tear up a little bit because I really haven't heard that much in my life. Um, not from public speakers anyway. And not that I'm a public speaker. I'm not at all. I'm just a, a little weenie <laughs> in a small town in Herberton. But it is such a blessing to remember that what is not celebrated on earth is celebrated in heaven. And I just... I, I tear up to think that the angels are looking down and Jesus Christ and God himself, God the uni universe creator, the master and builder of everything, is looking down on mothers, biblical mothers, godly mothers, soft-spoken, kind-spoken, wisdom-speaking mothers to their children and looking down and being like, yeah, good job so proud of you you're doing the, you're doing a great job it's just so nice to think about <laughs> is so encouraging and makes you think yeah I'm doing the right thing I'm not failing as a person and as a mother I'm not I'm not going backwards I'm going forwards in what God wants me to do and it's a blessing and I just wanted to encourage everyone else that's doing that to stand strong and not, not fight with other women because they're lied to. They're not the problem. It's Satan. Honestly, it's Satan who is lying to all these mothers and all these politicians and, and making us believe and lying to us that what we're doing is worth nothing. Um, so not fighting with each other, not jumping on social media and attacking other women that are have been lied to it's just standing strong in our job and knowing that we are doing the best job like we are we are attempting the best job it's a wonderful thing to be a proverbs 31 woman there's a lot of rejoicing in time to come that's the end